Hey everyone, how's it going? Thanks so much for tuning in. For today's video, we'll be taking an up close and personal in depth look with the very unique Volkswagen Beetle Dune. In this review, we'll start it up, show the engine, get an exhaust clip, and go over the performance data, take it on a thorough drive, and show you many of the unique aspects throughout the interior as well as exterior. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and hop on in, start her up, and let her run. Inspired by the classic Baja bugs of the late 1960s, the Dune is the latest in a long line of special edition Beetles. First introduced as a coupe for the 2016 model year, the Dune continues relatively unchanged for 2017, aside from the addition of a convertible model for those who prefer an open-air experience. Unlike Baja bugs of yore, the Dune doesn't have any legitimate off-road ability, it's more of a comprehensive styling package that widens the car by 0.6 inches, increases the ride height by 0.4 inches, and adds a number of rugged amenities throughout the interior and exterior. I love it when manufacturers step out of the box to create something different. This and the performance-oriented R-Line are some of the best-looking Beetles in recent time. They also broaden the model's appeal to those who prefer something a bit more aggressive. Up front, there's a narrow intake that sits right beneath the hood line, in addition to a larger central intake that widens towards its bottom edge. Surrounding the black honeycomb grille is a silver trim surround that seamlessly blends into the front skid plate. On either side of the intake are a pair of faux honeycomb vents that contain fog lamps, which come standard. If you opt for the $795 lighting package, the halogen headlamps are replaced with bi-xenon headlamps with LED daytime running lights. LED rear license plate lights are added as well. Matte black cladding wraps around the entire lower section of the Dune's body while creating distinctive fender flares in the process. This is where the extra body width comes in. The side is primarily characterized by the color contrast created by the black trim that bridges the wheel arches and the silver sill plates, a cue that Volkswagen claims is meant to emulate the original Beetle running boards. Other Dune specifics include the silver mirror caps, polished belt line trim, lower body graphics, and the wheel and tire package. At the back, the Dune is fitted with a large rear spoiler, standard LED tail lamps, and a new bumper design to complement the front. It too integrates matte black and silver elements with a pronounced skid plate that spans across the entire lower fascia. As I mentioned, the Dune is now available as both a coupe and convertible, which start at $23,995 and $29,395 respectively. On top of that, there's two optional packages available, including the aforementioned lighting package and the $1,695 technology package. On the convertible, the latter rings in at $995, as it doesn't include the panoramic sunroof for obvious reasons. Our tester doesn't carry additional options over what comes standard, aside from the Sandstorm yellow paint which comes at a $250 premium. This brings the total MSRP, including an $820 destination charge, to $25,065. The Dune features a unique set of 18 by 8 inch Canyon alloy wheels. Featuring a polished face and black painted pockets, they're wrapped in 235-45 all-season tires it's able to corner with up to 0.83 g of lateral acceleration. Bringing the car to a stop from 60 miles an hour in just under 120 feet are 11.3 inch ventilated discs up front and 10.7 inch solid discs in the rear. A four channel ABS system is standard along with electronic brake force distribution. Underpinning the Beetle is a four wheel independent suspension with McPherson struts in front and a multi-link design in the rear. The latter consists of three transverse and one longitudinal link per side. Beetles feature electrically assisted speed proportional rack and pinion power steering. It takes three turns to lock and has a ratio of 16.3 to 1. The turning circle is measured at 35.4 feet. 
The Beetle isn't a sports car in the purest sense of the word, but it has plenty of sporty characteristics. The steering for one is nicely tuned, and while devoid of some feel, it's quick to respond. It also handles itself admirably through the corners, feeling fairly agile with predictable body roll. If I had to pick, I'd say the new Golf feels more solid and composed over rough surfaces, but that doesn't mean the Beetle doesn't have good road manners. Quite the opposite, in fact. I thought the ride quality in the Dune was a bit stiffer than other Beetles I've driven, but it was never uncomfortable. Plus, it's hard not to enjoy the drive in one of these new Beetles, especially one as unique as this. If you're looking for something funky and fun, the Dune offers plenty of that and more. The Dune is powered by a 1.8 liter turbocharged and intercooled 4-cylinder. Constructed using an iron block and an aluminum head, it features 4 valves per cylinder, dual overhead cams, direct fuel injection, and variable valve timing on the intake side. The compression ratio is 9.6 to 1, while redline is approximately 6,000 RPM. Developing 170 horsepower at 4,800 RPM and 184 pound-feet of torque between 1,500 and 4,750 RPM, the Dune is able to hit 60 miles an hour in just over 7 seconds and accelerate to a governed top speed of 118 miles per hour. Performance in daily driving is more than adequate with smooth power delivery and peppy behavior, kind of a middle-of-the-pack type of deal with the rest of the competition. The engine offers a flat torque curve with very little turbo lag. The Dune, both the coupe and convertible, is only offered with a 6-speed automatic transmission which delivers power to the front wheels. No manual transmission is offered. While not as quick shifting as the DSG dual clutch 6-speed found in the Beetle R-Line, the conventional torque converter automatic does a fine job at keeping things smooth. If you pull back on the shifter while in drive, a sport mode activates. It works by raising the shift points to allow for livelier acceleration and more responsive throttle behavior when driving spiritedly. VW only offers paddle shifters with the DSG gearbox, but you still have some manual control if desired via the console shifter. Just tap it to the right while in drive and move the shifter forward and backward to change gears. In 2016, all Beetles, aside from the Dune, came standard with a manual transmission. Due to what I can only imagine is a general lack of interest, manual transmissions have been dropped from the 2017 Beetle lineup. Therefore, if you're wanting a Beetle with a manual transmission, you're going to want to look at a 2016 model. As far as fuel economy, the 1.8 liter runs on regular unleaded and is rated between 25 miles per gallon in the city and 34 miles per gallon on the highway with an expected average of 28 miles per gallon. The Beetle carries a 14 and a half gallon fuel tank. I believe Sandstorm Yellow is what completes this package. Considering that your only other options are either black or white, it's a no-brainer, especially when you see the cohesion that's created as the color permeates the interior. All Beetles have color matched trim across the dash and door panels, but only with Sandstorm Yellow does it tie into the Dune's unique appointments. Along with the two-tone cloth and leatherette upholstery, the Dune offers plenty of yellow stitching and piping. Even the instrument cluster is accented in yellow. The flat bottom steering wheel comes wrapped in leather, again with yellow stitching, and features a dune badge in the bottom spoke. While the Beetle is no luxury car, it still boasts excellent build quality for its segment. Everything feels solid and very well put together with touches of padded material and the essential touch points. The seats are another big highlight to this interior as I love the sport design, the big lateral bolsters, and the rib pattern coming across the middle. They're very comfortable and supportive. There's a lot of different adjustments, they're all manual, including manual recline, sliding, and height adjustment for both the driver and passenger. You even have adjustable lumbar. The steering wheel is manually tilting and telescoping, and the headrests are adjustable vertically. This generation of Beetle has been around since 2012, but I believe it's aged fairly well. I always liked how clean and simple things were. There's a nice list of standard features and everything is easy to use. With the technology package, keyless ignition and push-button ignition is added, along with a premium 8-speaker Fender audio system, dual-zone automatic climate control, and a panoramic sliding sunroof. As far as safety, the Beetle offers dual front airbags and head thorax side airbags. For 2017, an automatic post-collision braking system is also standard. The Beetle makes excellent use of its storage space across the lower door panels, center console, and even a tray on the upper dashboard. I'm particularly fond of the dual glove box setup, which together can swallow a ton of stuff. The upper glove box is actually a cue borrowed from classic Beetles and is known as the Beetle Bin. 
Volkswagen has done a lot to improve their infotainment systems in recent time, and the same goes for the Dune which has their latest setup. It spans 6.3 inches diagonally and has all of the modern features you typically expect and a lot of smartphone-like technology. This particular system doesn't have navigation, but it has everything else you'd expect nowadays like Apple CarPlay, Mirror Link, and Android Auto. So for example, if you have an iPhone, it doesn't even matter if the system doesn't come with navigation because you can plug your phone in and route the phone's navigation directly through the system and have voice guidance, Siri connectivity, and all of that good stuff. The other bit of smartphone technology I was referring to is the capacitive touch display, which, like a smartphone, doesn't require you to actually press into the screen to make a selection, all you have to do is tap it. And depending on the menu, you can swipe left and right or scroll up and down, so it's really easy and it's also quite responsive between the different menus and features. Speaking of features, you also have hands-free Bluetooth connectivity, Sirius XM satellite radio, and a backup camera. The camera has guidance lines as well as front and rear parking sensors, but what's pretty cool is the rear. The Volkswagen emblem, which also serves as the trunk's handle, when put in reverse, will pop up and reveal the backup camera. So now let's go ahead and see if she sounds. Into the back seat is pretty easy. All you have to do is just grab the little handle in the upper portion of the backrest here, tip it, and then slide the entire assembly forward. The Beetle offers decent back seat space for smaller individuals, but I'm 5 foot 10. The biggest rate limiting factor for me was leg space. I still had about an inch, inch and a half worth of wiggle room for head space. It's also a simple back seat with basic amenities like a cup holder, power outlet, adjustable headrest, grip handles, and of course child seat anchors. With the Beetle's hatch, it allows for a generous amount of cargo space for a compact car, not to mention greater flexibility when it comes to storing larger items. For privacy, a removable cover is included, but to fully take advantage of the space allotted, you'll want to take it out and fold down the 50-50 split rear seat. With the seats up, there's 15.3 cubic feet of space, but with them down, it expands to a total of 29.9 cubic feet. There's illumination back there for a low light working, and a spare tire underneath the trunk floor. Well everyone, I hope you enjoyed the in-depth look at the Volkswagen Beetle Dune. Be sure to stay tuned next time, there's always a lot more where that came from. Take care everyone.